That's all yours, Kev. And Emma. Thank you. <laughs> Let you start off, uh, Emma. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody, and welcome first to the annual parish assembly of Chilthorne Parish. Uh, there was no annual parish assembly last year because of COVID restrictions. Apologies for my camera, folks. It's um, very <laughs> temperamental. Um, but no, due to COVID restrictions, there was no annual parish assembly last year. Uh, so hopefully this will cover everything we need to cover for the last two years. Uh, agenda item one is the election of the chairman unless the parish council chairman is present to take the chair. Kevin, are you happy to take the chair on this meeting? Yeah, yeah, I'll take the chair. Yeah. Lovely, thank you. Over to you then. Okay. So we go on to item two then. Um, apologies and absence. Apologies for Mark yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, as I say, Tim, uh, Tony may be a fraction late. He's juggling various other meetings to be at, at the same time. Um, and I'm not sure where Josh is. Okay. No worries. Item three, minutes of the previous meeting held on the 4th of April. 2019. 2019. Who can remember that? <laughs> I can't remember yesterday. No. Oh. I'm having trouble as well to remember. <laughs> Can I take it, therefore, that you're all um, of the opinion that there are no glaring errors in the minutes that I circulated? This Why is from last, from, time? from last, from the year before last. Is that right, or the minutes from last month? Um, the minutes of the April 2019 for the annual parish assembly. Ah, uh, that's fine. All happy? Yep, all happy. Fabulous, thank you. Yep. Okay, item four. Chairman of the Parish Council's report. You've lost some paperwork here, Emma. If you've got it typed up, Kevin, do you want to just give it to me um, in by email? Yeah, okay. And it will form part of the minutes then, as far as yeah. the meeting itself is concerned, it will form part of the minutes for that will be distributed. Yeah, okay. Just Rather than trying to hunt for the piece of paper. Yeah, I'm still trying to log on to uh, everything in a minute. Okay. I'll write it out in full in the minutes. Yeah, okay, nice one. Item five, Village Hall report. Right. Am I reporting from the last year or the last month? Last year, please, Tim. Um, right, well, the Village Hall um, held its uh, AGM. Just give me a second while I pull it up. I thought I was going to have a little bit longer. Um, well, right, take your time. I've got too many windows open at the moment. Right, the Village Hall AG, um, AGM was held on the 19th of April. Uh, again, the previous uh, AGM, year's AGM had been uh, cancelled. Um, in terms of what's been going on, the hall has clearly been closed for the majority of the, the, the period. Uh, the um, income for the last year was actually not too bad, courtesy of the uh, SSDC grant, um, and uh, expenses were actually lower. So financially, the hall has actually been um, not hit by, um, by COVID. Uh, which has been extremely lucky. However, there's been a few additional costs, um, long-term maintenance work, and uh, also ensuring compliance with Legionella and getting a, a, some other areas of advice. Um, otherwise, uh, I don't think we're interested, uh, necessarily uh, needing to note, um, there's been no significant change to any of the officers uh, on the committee. Uh, a couple of uh, changes um, at uh, the lower levels in the committee 
uh, Richard Jones has decided to resign, but otherwise the majority of the um, others are uh, continuing as per. And uh, I don't think there's anything else uh, that's uh, significant in the AGM report. Happy to take questions. We've lost Emma. I'm I'll, still here. Yeah, I'll, when we talk when we talk about um, the village hall in the main um, thing, I'll talk about what's happening and the plans for starting up again. Great, thanks, Tim. Okay. Item six, recreational trust report. Right. Um, Lynn produced a report and I'll read it to you if you like. Um, this is for the, the, the year up to the 6th of May 2021. The COVID pandemic made the last year organization. However, the hope is that over, we are over the worst and we are looking forward to a brighter future. The lockdowns and varying rules for mixing, I can't read that, for mixing lead to multiple changes and restrictions in use of the facility at the recreation centre. However, however, even at the height of the lockdown, when the play equipment had to be cordoned off, the trust outside facilities greatly improved the quality of life for the community as the path and the field continued to be used by people taking their outside exercise. The feedback from the community indicates that the play equipment, playing field and pathway have been hugely appreciated during this year of reduced travel and mixing. When permitted, the indoor facilities have been used in a COVID secure way by the school, youth football teams, and the Chothorn Village Recreation Club. This use required new COVID policies, including hand sanitation stations, recording the track and trace for track and trace, use of max and cleaning after each user group. As the COVID rules are relaxed, we expect to welcome back other group user groups in a carefully staged manner. The trust income has clearly been massively reduced by the COVID restrictions, but many of the ongoing expenses have continued unchanged, like cutting the grass and all the health and safety inspections. However, a grant from SSDC has safeguarded the financial viability of the trust. Over the last year, the cellar has been refurbished and the bar refurbishment is about to start. The other major project that has started over the last few months is the application by the Parish Council to Somerset County Council's Climate Emergency Fund for installing solar panels on the Recreation Centre roof, for which the Trust Management would like to thank the Parish Council and particularly Tim for all the hard work involved in putting the application together. One impact of living a more local and restrictive lifestyle over the last year is that many people and organisations have been encouraged to reevaluate their impact on the climate emergency, on the climate emergency, and the trust is no exception. To facilitate lowering carbon initiatives, initiatives locally, the trust has joined forces with local community environmental group. Chothorn Green Trust and has joined forces with the local, sorry, has joined forces with the local community environmental group, Chothorn Green Trust. Steps for, for, a new, for a new project. The recreation centre will be open every Saturday afternoon to provide a venue for the local community to meet up and buy and sell or swap local produce and other items, recycle various things and any other activity that promotes lower carbon, healthier lifestyles, while at the same time providing an opportunity to socialize locally. This, of course, will be subject to the latest COVID guidance. This You've muted yourself, Amish.
I've unmuted, but it's too late now, isn't it? I've read it all. I'll send it. I'll send it to what my caller, Emma. Thanks, Hamish. We got most of it, Hamish. Don't worry. Did you? <laughs> yeah, most of it. it. Yeah. Right. I still can't even get into my other computer here. I don't know why the mute came on again. Is Emma gone as well? Have we lost Emma now? Uh, Emma has left the meeting, yes. <laughs> Not having a good night tonight, are we? No. My computers are playing up. I can't get on one. So can we carry on without Emma? No, because we need... Uh, need the clerk. Need the clerk. Are we streaming at the moment, Adam? Uh, we are indeed, yes. Okay. Oh, here's, she's coming back. There we are. My apologies, I totally dropped off. Emma, just do you leave. want to transfer the host back to me just because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's just removed all my streaming abilities over here? Apologies. Thank you. Yeah, I've had to join from the iPad because I don't know what's going on with the computer. Okay. Are we good to go again now? Uh, Hamish, did, did, uh, the last thing I heard from Hamish was I'll send it to, and I'm hoping that he said me. Yes. Fabulous. But other than that, yes, I'm good to go. Okay. Um, item seven then. Other matters raised by the parishioners. I've had, I've received nothing. Okay, then I'll item eight then is closure of the annual parish assembly then. Fabulous. I still can't get into this. <coughs> That's better. You can actually see my head now rather than just the top of me. <laughs> okay, Mr. Chairman, if you're ready to move on, we can. We can. Okay, so we'll go on to item one then on the agenda. Um, a... Just to confirm, there's nothing again received for the open session. Okay, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, item one then, apologies and absence. Again, Mark. Yeah. Um, and again, Tony, I'm Josh. assuming, is on his way as soon as he can be. And Josh. And Josh, I've not heard from. Okay. Okay. Uh, item two, declarations of interest. So none. None. Lovely. Item three, minutes of the previous meeting. I still can't get into my computer to look that one up in a moment. I've managed I'm to glad it's not just me. No, it's just the internet out here has been absolutely terrible the last week again. Uh, I have something to raise on the uh, minutes in the previous meeting, actually. Okay. Um, during the allotment section, um, Emma, we discussed about getting details uh, for the chippings and took that away as an action to come back to me. Uh, that wasn't minuted in the, in the meetings that were sent out. Chippings was was the meeting before. Uh, no, it was mentioned during the during the um, the allotment uh, meeting. Okay, what was during section uh, eleven? Can you remind me again, then, please. Yeah, um, I think you you confirmed that um, you were going to get back to me with details of when I could go and uh, potentially collect some chippings from the council location in Yeovil. Yeah, I'm trying. Uh, yes, yes. Um, I have asked the question because we asked if we could do it um easter friday didn't we it would have been your idea I, I forwarded that on to chris at south somerset and i've heard nothing back since no that's fine no yeah i, so, I that if that's the update that's fine it's just in the minutes it, it that was uh that was something you were going to take away and i'm just referring to the minutes were really, really inaccurate yeah. for that that particular section that's i lost most of that i don't know if it was my internet connection then but adam froze out on me <laughs> 
the good job this is the last virtual meeting, isn't it? It is. <laughs> no, because the, the, the next one is the day before the restrictions are lifted. Well, this, this is one of the questions I need to ask you guys a bit later, to be okay. fair. Uh, yeah, I'll make that amendment to the minutes. Thanks, Adam. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Okay, item four, election of officers and representatives. This is this is where if anybody's desperate to step up and do something different or step away and not do something, this is where you get to make those decisions. I propose Kevin for chairman. <laughs> <laughs> no time off for good no. behaviour. I think that was the quickest you'd ever proposed anything as a council. Thanks, Paul. <laughs> is anyone second that or? Uh... Yeah, I'll uh, I think everybody's seconding it because that I'll way they don't think about it. I, I think I see Mark even put his hand up and he's not even on. <laughs> Are you happy to carry on, Kevin? If you're all happy with what I can do, then yes, I'm happy to carry on. I think you're added to the sentence. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, mm -hmm. Vice Chair, have we heard anything from Mark? I, uh, I haven't. Um, not that I want to discuss over Zoom anyway. Okay. Um, I presume he's willing to carry on as he was once he can come back. Um, all we can do is propose him and if he doesn't want to we'll have to step somewhere. He can always step us. down as and when if he wants to. If everyone's happy to, for that I'll propose Mark still. Second it. That was quick. <laughs> I was going to say Kevin if uh, Mark chooses to step aside I would be more than it'd be a pleasure to step into the vice chair position and give you some support. I can't okay. obviously I can't obviously propose myself. Okay mate no worries. Somebody I'll... want to propose Adam as a as a, a, back. a secondary backup in case Mark is unable or unwilling. I will propose that as well. Tim, lovely. Thanks for that, Adam. No worries, pleasure. Oh, we're actually planning ahead. <laughs> <laughs> it does occasionally happen. Um, hey, Mish, are you happy carrying on with the Recreation Trust? Yes, at the moment I am, yes. Unless you want to swap over the village hall with me. No, I think my wife was on that, and I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> Conflict of interest, I think, isn't that called, Hamish? Oh. Oh. Tim, are you happy carrying on with the village hall? Yes, I am. And we can only assume at this point that Mark is happy carrying on as um, footpaths and trees. Trees, yeah, footpaths and trees, yeah. Until we hear otherwise. Yeah, I will try and speak to him the weekend. Uh, bear in mind, I've only got one day at home, so. Lovely. Thank you very much, folks. Okay, thank you. Uh, item five is County Councillor's Report. You should have received it via email. Yeah, I just can't. I just can't get it up at the moment, Emma. It's just yeah. Well, I haven't got. I don't know what's going on out here at the moment. It's I keep getting an unsuitable, <laughs> unstable connection coming up on my screen at the moment. I had that just before it kicked me out just a minute ago. Okay, so I'm sorry. I, I tried printing some of it off the other night, and it just the printer was playing up. Everything's playing up at the moment. Did anybody else have any comments from? Josh's report. I have on the further down, it says one Somerset, the government's public consultation brackets the only guaranteed way for the public to have a say. At the Don't time of writing, it was, at the time of writing, it was Paul. Well, it's not now though, is it? No, but at the time that Josh wrote it, it was. Mm, okay, so it's not up to date. Okay. Well, it was up to date whenever he, whenever I sent it to you. Well, I don't know about that one. 20th anyway. of April that was sent. 
Um, what date, sorry, April, Adam? Tw 29th of April, that was sent. In that um, case, it was up to date because the decision was, was made on the 30th, yeah. wasn't it? I'm not going to split hairs on this. Okay. Just think it's a lot of rubbish. There we are. Anybody else got anything that they want to raise that I can pass on to Josh? Speaking, Tim, you're muted. Uh, the small improvement scheme does seem to be uh, slowing traffic on uh, Tintinal Road, um, from what I've seen. I mean, yes, I'm, you know, we still get the idiots, but my impression I have is that the majority of the traffic is actually slowing both for the 30 and uh, when the 20 uh, flashes are on. Yeah, I was going to bring something up about that in the um, community safety and police matter, but I suppose I could bring it up now. I see we've had a couple of visits with the local constabulary with the um, speed gun in the village. Um, yeah, I um, I went out and gave um, thanks on behalf of the parish council for his attendance on that day. Yeah, the only the only thing I can say about that was, as I was coming into the village, everybody was flashing everybody, coming the opposite way. That's that's, that's pretty common, to be honest, Kev. Yeah, yeah. I, I know it's pretty common, but I've never seen it on the scale of it was happening through the village here. Mm. Um, Probably because we haven't seen the, uh, the uh, cameras for some, quite some time. No, but he's been here two weeks running, hasn't he? Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's good to see him, but uh, I hope he caught a few hundred, but I very much doubt it. Yeah, but did you know it was illegal to flash? Yes, yes. yes. Like, to warn that it's illegal. But yeah, only if you get caught. That's why I well, left yeah, it there. Yeah. Yeah. Was, you only get done if you get caught. So all you do is have right another right. police car the other side of the road a bit further up to catch everyone who uh, who flashes, isn't they? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we move on to item six, and if we've covered that one, district councillor's report. Good evening, Tony, as well. Uh, good evening, and it's lovely to be here with you. I, um, Paul, do you want to go first? Um. I could uh, carry on with this reference to the uh, road improvements and speed. Um, we still have a 40 mile an hour limit here. So I don't see the relevance of speed cameras or police or anybody else. Because 40 is too fast. We all know it's too fast. It should have been 30. Um, so well done. You've got a bit of um, reduced speed up top. It's a shame we couldn't do the same for the bottom um, half and the residents down here. I don't think we're going to give up yet, Paul. Well, I've been at it for a long time. I shan't. One day we'll get somebody to support us from County. Okay. Maybe if we get this um, situation sorted out um, with some actual local people running highways, then maybe we'll get some results as well. Okay. Yeah. Tony, you're yours before I ask somebody. <laughs> Thanks, Paul. Um, yes, um, Kevin, there's a few things. One is uh, um, your lovely Emma rang me last week or week before to do with some water running off the road, which I think you was getting high rated with and you couldn't get anybody and couldn't get no joy. And uh, the last resort, <laughs> it came back to me. And hopefully we had a result out of that because somebody from our council actually did go out to have a look. So I've been told, he sent me an email. So hopefully that's cleared that bit up, uh, Kevin. I've, I've, I've read the email. Yeah. And I can't believe that they think it's acceptable to just charge water down the main highway. Well, if they say you can, what can we do about it, to be honest? Perhaps Emma, oh, perhaps oh. Emma can clarify that point. Is it illegal to discharge water into the highway, Emma? It is against. It is illegal because um, it's against the Highways Act. Um, so I will contact highways and well not done. complain about a discharge of foul water. I will complain about a discharge of water. Lovely. That's the first yeah. thing. And um, the other thing is I, I've sent a, an email on to Emma to do with litter picking. Our district council, uh, Environmental Health, has got a kit now which you can use um, as a community for litter picking. 
and it's free it's in a cabinet it's got all the pinterest got everything else i think emma will send that all around to you so you can have a look at it and then you can um, make up your mm. mind if you want to do that can we Either get some for the green sorry tony can we get some for the green steps and all that because they're really hot on the litter picking well it's there as soon as you get that information that uh, emma can pass it on to you you can have a look then you can um, sort out what you'd like to do it's, it's free to anybody who wants to use it Tony, do, you know, do we know what it actually comprises? Because, I mean, at the moment, you know, Kevin's been very good at providing us with high vis jackets. Um, so, you know, and I've been out about four or five times on litter picking now around the village in the last year and a half. Okay. The only, the only thing I've got to say is when you click on the link, when you get it, you can see it's a package and it tells you everything that's in this cupboard. I can't do it on here. I wish I could because I don't know how to put the screen up on here. But as uh, soon as you get that, sorry, but as soon as you get that, you have a look at it. And if there is any issues and you're not too sure of, come back to me and we'll take it from there. Okay. Is there a, is there a limit how many we can apply for? No, I just think there's a, 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 a thing in, in a kit that you use and then you put it back when you finish using it. I think that's how it works. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's how it works. Thanks, right. Tony. Okay, so, so at, the moment, is, at the moment, Tony, you know, uh, yeah. the Green Steps group have been coordinating litter picking on the village now for about a year and a, a bit. And uh, yeah, it's, uh, you know, I, think, I think last time we got about four or five wheelbarrow loads and I reported uh, something in the order of 20 to 40 tyres that had been dumped in the stream uh, at the bottom of Vag Hill. OK, um, all right. Um, just moving on a little bit more on that. We've elected a new, chief, a new chief exec for our district council. So I think you're aware that the other um, chief exec is leaving. Um, he is Alex Parmley. has got a job in New Zealand working for a council over there, district council. He's leaving. So we've um, voted in Claire Pastel, and she's actually one of our officers that's doing with investment. And she's been on our council 15 years. And she knows a lot about it. What we didn't want to do as a district council is advertise this post outside until we know exactly what's happening with unitary authority. In other words, it's pointless to getting a new chief exec from outside, paying a lot of money, and then finding out that, uh, you know, hang on a minute, we are going to have a stronger Somerset, or we're not going to have a stronger Somerset. Until we know what's happening, this is only a temporary post till we know what the future is of our council. Now, she's in the post now, and... Uh, I think the old chief exec will be leaving in about a week's time and uh, she'll be taking over. So we got a new chief exec. Apart from that, Chairman, that's all I got really say. Thank you, Tony, and thank you for um, trying to sort that over as well. Because it was reported to me as a problem as well. Uh, yes, Kevin, we all know about that. Yeah. <laughs> no, only kidding. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, mate. Yeah, you know, right. just looking at and marvelous. A phone's better than a computer, and I'm just looking at on on my phone here what's uh, come through. It's like a little board <laughs> with sticks and all sorts that you can. I imagine it's great for outside the recreational club or something like that, or um, when you're doing a litter pick. Yeah, well, use it, use it. Yeah, Vag, Vag Hill it tends to be the uh, produce about three quarters of the litter in the parish. That's just after they've finished eating their KFC, mate. That's just about the time span it takes for yep. it to from the stuff. And thing. McDonald's and all the rest. And yeah. yeah. Terrible. Terrible. Okay. Oh, the, the, the best was some, somebody had also managed to dump a uh, complete uh, cistern from a toilet. Oh, right. oh, you could flush it away. Yeah. We tried. Yeah. Okay. We okay to move on to item seven then, Emma? Highway matters. Yes, please. I'm happy when you are. Okay. Item seven and highway matters. Um, I have chased up the companies that I contacted um, previously, um, and unfortunately, still have heard nothing. So I'm going to go to different companies for some um, Sid quotes because if they still don't want to give me a, a quote, as far as I'm concerned, we don't necessarily want to be dealing with them. Okay. Brilliant. Um, I think Adam had his hand up. I did. Um, just uh, I took it as an action last uh, uh, between last month and this month's meeting to go away and survey the village um, locations. I did send an email out. Didn't get anyone come back at me on that one. I've looked at a few of them, Adam. Um, 
I'm not sure about the wooden telegraph poles. I think they prefer metal ones for fixing points. So if yeah, if you I didn't I don't think I went on wooden, but it could have been. But basically, I just thought I'd do the entire survey of the village anyway. Has anyone not seen it? Um, I can just very quickly flash it up if anyone's not seen yeah. not seen it. No, I've seen it. Um, yeah. A lot of work go into that. I can't do anything like that. But I did walk down the A37 north in an northerly direction, and there is a pole just about where the um, old telephone box was that has a bracket on it, which I think is where the SID has been put before. But I couldn't see one on the opposites, on the right-hand side of the road going north, which would be east, the east side. I couldn't see a bracket on that side of the road at all. But this is on a pole that says um, crossroads 180 miles, 180 metres ahead. And that looks as though where it was before. Whether they turned it round and did both directions from the one site, I don't know. Yeah, so um, the, of the survey I did, um, I didn't manage to get as far as the A37. So I, what I was waiting for really is some general temperature of whether the work I'd done was okay because I didn't want to go further than that if it wasn't right. Because um, um, it was a, quite a bit of effort in putting that all together. So um, yeah, um, obviously as well, you know, for the purposes of anything else we wanted to track on here, um, this resource can be used to, to, to have anything on it in terms of any data we want to capture in terms of resources in the village or locations of the village. So um, it can be used moving forwards if anything you want to add on to it. But um, if we're happy that it's the right thing to do, I will just do the little bit up Yeovil Road, Kev, towards your place and get yeah, that done. Um, um, one at the bottom by the Carpenters. Yeah, Carpenters has all been done. Should have been. Yeah, that's good. Um, yeah, so looking at, let me just, I will share my screen image just because it's. Yeah. Uh, While you're doing it, Emma, quick question. That one about telegraph poles, I mean, we've um, certainly, bottom of uh, the village, um, Adam had sort of looked at a couple of options, but I think the only ones there were either the 30 mile or the, the 30 mile, 40 mile an hour speed limit signs that are already in place, which tend to be pretty obscured by vegetation and are too late or the wooden ones. Do you know what the regs are on using the wooden ones? I have no idea, um, if I'm honest. Uh, when you say the bottom of the village, can you, the your the bottom church. of the village might be different to my bottom of the village. I'm, I'm sure it is, by the church. Okay, and then, okay. And then, it, and then Kings Hill down to oh, yeah. so uh, Hamish. Down, down here, Kevin, is it? Um, it's the one further back up the hill. Um, yeah, that's the one that so, Tim's talking about. Sorry, yeah, just... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure about the wooden poles because I don't think they class them as um, permanent fixings because I think you can pull the screws out of the wood, you see. I see. So, so it's not a bracket that goes around the whole pole it's, then? No, it's just a bracket that goes around the metal poles. I think they're made for the metal poles. And then when you put this device on it, it seals off the bolts. Ah. Oh, I see. So, so this one here... Tim, in coming to your question, that looks like a metal pole there. Um, placement, I'm not sure whether that's useful or not. There's this one opposite the church. That's obviously a, a, a wooden, that's wooden, that's a wooden one. one. Yeah. Uh, I Basically, what I did, um, just to explain a little bit, is obviously the 30s and the 40s are actual sp existing speed limits. And then what yeah. I've done here is I've just... If I've, if, I've, if I've seen anything that can be potentially used, I've taken a picture of it anyway and logged it um, just for, to, just in case if it's of any use. Um, but Kev, were you talking about the one? Yeah, if you go further back up the hill from where you are there. Up here? Uh, yeah, if you went, uh, that's the one, yeah, there. This one here? Yeah, that's yeah, the one. So let me just... That was the existing one, what they used originally. Hey, the but one up they, there. Yeah, yeah, when they took the um, old sign out and put the new one in, they took the bracketry with it right okay yeah fine um yeah i obviously for obvious reasons i couldn't walk right up there because i didn't want to get killed by the people speeding down the hill <laughs> ironic um but um yeah um that, that's fine but yeah um i'll um i'll finish off the rest of the work down yeovil road up as far as chilthorn hill uh and um 
I'll also go down towards the A37 as well and just put anything on down down here that's needed. Yeah. Um, I did walk most of mo all the way down to the junction here. I didn't get this bit down here, but I'm assuming this part of Vag Lane we're not looking at, at monitoring. I think that's going to be a recipe for disaster down that road if we put one yeah. there, because I don't think it's going to last much more than a couple of nights. Besides, it tends to be self-regulating. If, if anybody is speeding down there, they tend to hit either other traffic or the, or the verge. Unless you don't care, care about your wing mirrors, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's fine. So, yeah, I'll, I'll do that. And obviously, um, the link in the email I sent out is it will be valid um, for you guys to, to, to use that for any information you need to. Brilliant. All Brilliant right. bit of work, though, Adam. Yeah. Thank you. Pleasure. <laughs> we open to move on to item eight then. Yeah, please. Community safety and police matters. Uh, again, no up-to-date no, figures no up -to -date. have been sent through or available on the website. Okay. Item nine then, financial matters and accounts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I just, just realised how, you know, how big this section is on this agenda. Mm. Um, you should have all received the uh, financial spreadsheet for last year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've not sent one through yet for this financial year. I decided that I attached enough attachments to your email, if I'm honest. Um, uh, basically, not only that, the only item on there would have been the fact that we'd received the precept. So I, I decided not to bombard you with that as well. Um, apologies if that was the wrong decision. Um, mm. So as far as... Um, this financial year is concerned, we've received the precept of £9,500. And that obviously will be on top of the figures left over from last financial year. Um, we have, um, I'll come back to last financial year's spreadsheet. Sorry, I forgot the word. We've got uh, um, five checks, please, for authorization. Um, I'm quite happy if you don't yet want to authorise the third one, which is the internal audit. I have dropped the items around to the internal auditor today. Um, I'm quite happy if you want to put a caveat on it that it can only get written when she's done it. Um, because obviously she's not actually completed the work yet. So I'm quite happy if you want to do that. Um, it just means that we don't have to wait another month until I can hand her check. Other than that, it's my salary, HMRC for me. Um, the grass cutting for the area by the memorial um, and the insurance renewal with a total cost, she says, find the right bit of paper, which includes the bus shelter and includes um, cover for a SID, because I've decided that now was the time to do that rather than potentially pay a, an extra fee for changing the, insur the insurance part way through. Um, it's 47965 plus a 50 pounds, um, what do they call it? I want to say admin, but it's... <laughs> That's an increase of about... 25 pound a month uh, uh, per year isn't it also for yeah last year i think it's uh, last year's premium was 440.93 plus the 50 yeah. it is an administration fee um so our total premium this year is 52965 versus 49093 last year yeah, so i'm assuming that everybody's happy yeah that's the bus shelter and the sid gone on there yeah the one four years worth of bus shelter and Sid gone on. Okay, sounds uh, pretty good. And as I said, we've got the uh, four hundred pound for the grass cutting around the memorial, which is okay. uh, sixteen cuts at twenty five pound each. Everybody happy with all of those? And what would you like me to do about the internal audit? Okay. You will. <laughs> It's going to happen. So if you want to pay it, Emma, I'm quite happy for you too. I think we're happy for the cheque to be raised when I actually I can't raise the cheque for that one because I haven't got a cheque 
sat ready for that one. I've got checks sat ready for the insurance and for the grass cutting. The rest of the checkbook is currently with the internal auditor, so she can't have a check well, until she's are. done the work. There you are. You've answered your own question. Yeah. Pay, that, pay her when she's done the work. almost, wasn't it? Yeah, pay it once you send the work. <laughs> okay, lovely. Thank you very much, folks. Uh, we've not received any grant requests this month. Um, and then we go on to the accounts for last year. You will have received, as I say, the financial spreadsheet from last year. Did anybody have any questions on that financial spreadsheet before we move on to the other pieces of paper? I didn't. No. Whoever... Hamish has or not? I'm, I'm waiting for Hamish to, to reread yeah, it. We'll look at Hamish checked. at this moment. The, the only thing I don't know whether it's on this sheet or not. I so was it our um, I think it's seventy-seven thousand or something like that. That um, things we have the bus shelters. There's a new bus shelter not going on. So, assets. Are talking the about word, the assets? That's the word, Kevin, assets. That'll be on this one. That page thereof. And you're absolutely correct. I need to add the bus shelter. Because we don't seem to write them down anything, in, you know, every year or anything like that. So stays the same unless we buy more things yeah i will add the bus shelter um and i'll i'll add it as a five thousand pound bus shelter as opposed to what we paid because if we would have to replace it that's what it would cost us yeah great uh and that's what it's insured at as well for interest's sake is the full cost for replacement rather than what we paid yeah, but okay. Hamish's point on depreciation is valid. I mean, uh, what's the what's the pr process on depreciation of assets? I don't think, think the assets off. we hold go down in value. I think they go up in value. Well, yeah, the bus shelter will need replacing at some point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the IT equipment is a, an example of that. Yes. Um, we should be writing it over three years, really. Yeah. There is no process. I, unfortunately, I'm not a valuer by trade, uh, and therefore I can't tell you what the devaluation of certain items is versus other items. Um, all I can tell you is that at some point, the War Memorial was valued at £3,583. Yeah, which would be considerably more now because the price of labour and materials to replace it. Same as the bus shelter in 10 years' time, it'll cost half as much again. But computers go down. Yeah. Same as cars. As soon as, as, soon as you bought them. Yeah. As as do things like... Like a Saab. Benches. Okay. Things <laughs> the actual off. asset itself, if this is a list of assets rather than a list of replacement values. Yeah. So okay. if we're not, we're not, we're not uh, taxed on it or anything else, so it's probably... No. Less important. Yeah. But if anything, Tim's absolutely right. This list should devalue in figure as opposed to going up in figure because to replace it would be more. Yeah. But also we need to recognise if we're, for our insurance as well and making sure that, that we have the appropriate levels covered um, each year and, that, yeah. and, re and that's reviewed because, you know, if, if we need to increase our insurance slightly to cover the increase of that, we need to make sure that that's being reflected accordingly. Yeah. Yes. Perhaps, perhaps if, um, we take, if we take an action through, through this year, through this year, to reassess the valuation on the assets, give ourselves time to do that um, between now and uh, next AGM. Yeah. If somebody's able has the knowledge to do that, then that'd be superb. I think we can make a reasonable call. I mean, there's, there's certainly enough government finance uh, guidance on how to do it. Um, and I think you know, Adam's point, you know, some things go up, some things go down. We can probably make a pretty good finger on the air on how, how long you know, a wooden gate or whatever is going to last you know, versus the cost of replacing the war memorial, make a decision what we want to cover it for. I think um, Ilchester is a classic example on that on the memorial, yep. right there, yeah. isn't it, Tony? How much yeah, is that I was worth? Say that. <laughs> 
Yeah, the parish council paid for that. It's quite a lot of money on that. As opposed well, to like, base. If you want the exact figure, I can find out and let you know. Not not really. I'm just sort of, I think it was 70 or 80,000 in the end, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. for a few points of beer. Exactly. And an insurance company that wouldn't pay out. Oh, hang on a minute. Are you on about the market cross? Not the market cross the one, yeah. Memorial. Market yeah. cross. Yeah, the market cross. cross. Yeah, yeah, that's different. That's not the war memorial. Yeah, no. market cross. Do you know what? It's a standing joke, isn't it? Because the town trust give their report at parish council meeting two months ago, and it was going to be started in uh, beginning of May. Well, no, not begin beginning of April. Sorry, April's gone. I reckon there's going to be another year or two years before that gets sorted out. And when I spoke to the community relations officer at Yobleton, because he comes down uh, on parish council stuff. I said, you know what, you're accountable for this. I said, you people should get together with, with the town trust and get this put, uh, put back up. Cool, he had a go at me. He said, we've asked them, they don't want our help. And there, that's where it stays. What a joke, what a joke. World we live in. Yeah, I'll tell you what, if, if we was in China, Kevin, just to tell you, that had been put up overnight. Yeah, yeah. Thank God we don't. <laughs> Okay. Uh, for your information on the War Memorial um, in Chilthorne, it is currently insured for £4,278.27. Probably won't cover the labour nowadays. Well. Yeah, but the risk, but, the risk, the risk is slender. I think we need to you know, just look at it and make a decision. <laughs> yeah. At least it's got a bloody big wall between it and the traffic. Yeah. Yes. I think the, the answer to your question, Emma, is that the, I think the accounts look pretty good. Thank you very much, Adam. <laughs> I was just trying to bring us out of that little rut. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. Is everybody happy with this document? Yep. 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 When I next see Kevin in the flesh, we can get that signed. Okay. Um, fantastic. Right, I now need to ask you a series of questions. I would obviously like you to be honest, um, but I would obviously also quite like the answers to be yes. Um, but honesty comes above saying yes. Uh, there are eight questions in total. I shall begin at number one. We have put in place arrangements for effective financial management during the year and for the preparation of the accounting statements. Yep. Yes. Yes. Lovely. Would you um, like a raise of hands, Emma, instead of everyone? I'd, I'd like it? some, yeah, please. Yeah. Either that or I'll, I'm going to take an absolute silence as a yes. Hey, Mish. <laughs> hey, Mish, was that a yes? Okay. Uh, we maintained an adequate system of internal control measures. Sorry, add a quick system of internal control, including measures designed <laughs> to prevent and detect fraud and corruption and reviewed its effectiveness. <laughs> We've had no hand from Hamish. <laughs> Lovely, thank you very much. <laughs> we took all reasonable steps to assure ourselves that there are no matters of actual or potential non-compliance with laws, regulations and proper practices that could have a significant financial effect on the ability of this authority to conduct its business or manage its finances. Oh. We provided proper opportunity during the year for the exercise of electors' rights in accordance with the requirements of the accounts and audit regulations. I love the way that Adam's hand went up first because he was the one that published the documents. <laughs> uh, we carried out an assessment of the risks facing this authority and took appropriate steps to manage those risks, including the introduction of internal controls and or external insurance cover where required. And we're going to be able to definitely say yes to that one next year without Tim's hesitation there. I think he had this time. All right. I, when, I, when I reassessed it as financial risk, then I'm happy. We maintained throughout the year an adequate and effective system of internal audit of the accounting records and control systems. Mm -hmm. 
We took appropriate action on all matters raised in reports from internal and external audit. And to assist you with this answer, there was no external audit and there were no matters raised on the internal audit. Uh, and the last one, we considered whether any litigation, liabilities or commitments, events or transactions occurring either during or after the year end have a financial impact on this authority and where appropriate, have included them in the accounting statements. Hamish, was that Hamish yes? raises, he raises eyebrows instead of his hand. <laughs> Lovely, thank you very I didn't much, really gentlemen. I didn't really understand it, to be honest. Would you like me to go through that one again, Hamish? Yeah, just read that one again. Okay. We considered whether any litigation, liabilities or commitments events or transactions occurring either during or after the year end have a financial impact on this authority and, where appropriate, have included them in the accounting statements. I'm not a lot wise. Uh, an answer of yes means that this authority disclosed everything it should have done about its business activity during the year, including events taking place after the year end, if relevant. He's still not a lot wiser. No. Nope. Basically, Hamish, is there any, you know, we've all said we're happy with what happened during the year. This is the classic one. Has anything happened since it would make us change our minds? You're on mute, You're on mute Hamish. No, I suppose not. <laughs> <laughs> mm. We'll take that as a yes then. Okay. Um, that's me all done. Thank you, Emma. You, you, you've already done the accounting statements, um, and I put audit exemption on here, but I realised that we covered that last month as well, that you were happy with me to go in for the exemption for the external audit, as we did in previous years. Thank you very much. Thank you all. We're happy to move on to item 10, Emma. Yeah, I'll, I'll remember I'll everything we just did. Okay. Item 10, planning matters. No new applications as of the publishment of the um, agenda. Um, I haven't checked in the last day or three, um, but I'm assuming if Paul or Tony knew about any, they'd be telling us right now. Yeah, I haven't seen anything. I don't well, know if Paul. No, nothing. Fabulous. Um, yeah, just to tell you, there's um, no plan application coming to Air East next week. It's just some grant requests. And uh, nothing else. Well, I, pro, we all know that. It's all to do with the phosphates anyway. Okay. Okay. Item 11 foot half issues. Yeah, uh, Mark contacted me um, and asked me to pop this on the agenda. Um, he asked if it would be possible um, initially to um, contact county because they're the people in charge of the rights of way. Um, to investigate the possibility of replacing three styles with three kissing gates on um, the footpath between Sock Lane and the Leyland Trail. So it's Y413 to Y414. Um, I obviously said that I'd bring it to the meeting and that obviously subject to your um, agreement, then not a problem to approach county, um, but don't hold your breath. <laughs> I very much doubt that they're going to stump up the money to do so. Um, Mark then turned around and said, well, what about the parish council paying? Because could we go halves or could we get a part funding towards it or? Do we know what the issue is with those particular styles? I don't, unfortunately. I think it's just um, a matter of making it easier. Hello, as opposed got... to a, a potential issue with the styles, because if it was a, if it was an issue with the styles, I'm sure Mark would have said the styles need work. I can obviously double check that with Mark. No, I mean I know we've got kissing gates on some of the other butts on the this, on the um, if you like you know, the extension of that where it goes into uh, the area around the church. Kissing gates are a lot easier for people to walk with. They got disabilities yeah. or dogs or something with them as well. Compared with or styles, what they got to try and lift dogs over or small children and all that. 
or stop at in a wheelchair. Yeah. Yeah, the mud would probably do, do that as well. Um, I think it's unsensible to approach county and you know see what the response is. If and then if if we have to look at putting something into that, you know, or uh, you know, offer to go part way, then yeah, that would seem sensible. It's probably worth. Is it worth Emma just clarifying with Mark what he means by in, in terms of what needs doing to the gates or changing um, if they're actually. Not in a good state of repair then obviously we'll have more of the yeah. business case to approach them to fund that just point, out, sorry. just point out that kissing gates um if you're in a wheelchair are a no-no stalls aren't much of a good any good anyway oh, no no stalls are no good but kissing gates likewise are the same that, that you know they're no good yeah okay <laughs> There are, there are some designs of kissing gates, I think, Dennis, that are okay for wheelchair users because they've got a larger refuge, oh, if you like, so you can put yourself into the refuge and still swing the gate. I mean, but I take your point, absolutely. I mean, perhaps next month, if we, particularly if we've got Mark at the meeting, it would be useful because I mean, what, what I'm, I'm looking at the, um, the, the various footpaths and what I can't see looking at it is any sort of obvious bit that says this footpath is one that goes from A to B and is wheelchair friendly, for example, you know, they all seem to have their set of obstacles that would stop anybody uh, you know, that uh, isn't um, able to climb over something. So I'm just wondering, you know, should we actually be looking at it and saying, okay, this particular route should be being made uh, good? So I think there's one to ask Mark. Either well, ask Mark or directly to Eden <clears throat> County and ask if there's any inclusivity policy that public rights of way have over footpaths. Because it's not just um, wheelchairs, is it? It's, it's small children in pushchairs. It's people that aren't necessarily in a wheelchair but aren't mobile enough to climb. Just go to county. I'm going to start with if you want, and uh, see where I'll we check, go. I'll check. I'll check with Mark, as Adam said, to make sure that there's no issue with those yeah. three particular styles. That if they're in poor state of repair, we have I think more Adam's pipe, absolutely we? right that we have more of a um, basis to get them replaced. Yeah. Um, potentially not at cost to the parish council, um, but if it's just a case of making it more inclusive. I say just, I, that, that sounds like I'm making light of that and I'm not. But if it is a case of making it more inclusive by putting kissing gates in rather than styles. In, in um, fairness, Emma, if, if it's a case of making it more inclusive, that in itself is a, is a, is a good business case, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I think we should absolutely push it, push it back to, to them to come back at least with a response uh, rather than just expecting to go into our pockets, first of all. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll approach you, Gwen. Norma. Item 12 then, allotments. Over to you, Adam. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm going to share my screen again, just because because I can, really. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because I can. It's a because good enough answer. Because, <laughs> because I, can. I can. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> um, hang on. There we go. Um, so... Um, First of all, I've sent a personal thank you, but I'll, for the record again, uh, uh, thank you to Tony Capazzoli for uh, the kind donation of the raised beds. Um, they were perfectly fine. Um, and I've now been put, they've now started to be put in situ. I've put the first couple of beds in there. So um, as was mentioned as well in the last meeting, we put a, a feeler out through the Green Steps newsletter. Uh, we've had four people confirm that they'd like to have an allotment and a fifth person just coming back to me um, with their details. Um, so that's a really positive turnout, really. So the the based on minutes from last month, it was a case of we were, we were trying to get at least four people coming forward um, to look to take that on. Um, so um, just to give you a bit of, I don't know if you've walked past this recently, uh, but to give you a bit of an idea, and this is the state it was last month um, where it was all quite a poor state of repair. I've been streaming this um, over the period, but obviously, you know, over winter, that wasn't possible to look after that. So it was stripped down. 
um, started clearing uh, the front section as well. That's all been turned over several times and leveled off. Uh, and this is the green steps allotment here. Um, and there's also, these are all the, the, uh, the beds. Oh, that were, exactly. Um, these aren't purchased, by the way. These are other ones, but just showing the, uh, we've been, the rest of it's been covered over now, essentially, just to prevent uh, any, you know, try and kill off this weeds in the meantime. But there you go. That's the first couple of uh, sections that have been put together. Um, I'm still undecided as to whether they'll be in this uh, cyber side or not. But the, I think the view based on the size of them, um, I'm proposing that we'll probably give them two each uh, because the, the, they're sort of one by two meter um, sizes to start with. So I think get, that gives them at least a decent area to kind of grow in. And I'm confident that we can get six in each side, which gives us our 12 our 12 plots we were looking to, to have out. So the view really boys, I'll, I'll continue to move this back to put the four in um, for our initial people who are interested to start getting them in there. Um, and then the rest of it can essentially be, be worked on as and when we get interest. So we can kind of grow as, as the needs goes, but um, yeah, it's nice to sort of see it kind of coming into shape now, at least in, in um, as you say, Kev, the soil has been turned. Spoilers and it's broken my broken. back in the process <laughs> yeah um but no it's, it's it's looking a lot better than it was um and uh, you know now it's obviously getting warmer as well um that's seen that's that's coming along well um the next bit i guess was the um the rainwater harvesters i've spent the majority of my time getting this in, into a good state uh, it needed quite a lot of work so far um i know there was 500 pounds earmarked um in the last meeting that was put as, as a a figure that we'd be willing to spend up to um obviously for the beds now we don't need to, to do that so um thank you for that uh, and what i'll suggest is when we get to the point where i can build the rainwater harvester i'll confirm the specific costs for that project um of that 500 pounds that would need to be uh funded um but they the view would be is they would go um towards the back over here um and you can see a similar design uh, this is available on the website, by the way, um, but I've got a bigger design of what they look like. Essentially, it's two IBC containers with a pitched roof above them with, and some small amount of drainage to go into there. Um, of the other people that have built them, it's been relatively successful as well, which has been good. So the last bit of rain has been uh, been good to kind of capture. So, um, so yeah, I just wanted to kind of give a bit of an update really on that one. Um, there's been a lot of work gone into it this month. And um uh, and yeah, uh, it's nice that we've got some uh, some good amount of interest now in in the allotments. Um, yeah. Thanks, Adam. The um, couple of things I've got on it is, did we get anywhere of the grant? We were going to look into a grant that could be part funding this as well, wasn't we? Uh, I've I've not looked into that because the as the minutes showed from the last meeting, I was waiting for confirmation from Adam before Adam. I went anywhere near a grant. Okay. Brilliant. And um, with um, Adam not having anything to spend because Tony very kindly sorted yeah. that, Adam didn't come to me with any information to go anywhere near a grant. To, okay. to be honest, from my perspective, I had enough to do um, between that meeting and this to get that yeah. into a good state. Um, so, and what I would suggest is, is that you know, uh, we'll, we'll I'll only come to the council for funding as and when we need it. Um, so for the rainwater harvesters, I'll, that'll, be, that'll be an example of that. But apart from that, we've been getting on so far with donations, which has been really positive. And also, I'd like to think that the people who are getting at these plots may well be also willing to give a hand in, main, in progressing that um, yeah. uh, plot further back. Um, so it's not just me putting my sweat and toil into it. <laughs> yeah, the other thing, Adam, is the bus shelter. Could you not link one of the IBCs into the guttering? Unfortunately not. That's actually on the back of someone else's plot. Um, and their, their view, based on the good design I put together for a rainwater harvester, they're already planning on putting one right by the bus shelter. <laughs> and also the, dr the drainage distance is going to be across two plots. So it would be be quite far to get across, uh, if you see what I mean. Yeah, okay. no, just thinking because there's a roof area. I mean, obviously there's water coming down. For the yeah, cost of a yeah. couple and, bits of pipe. Yeah, so the, the the person who's got the allotment uh, that backs onto that um, is already linking into that drainage. Um, so, uh, but also because it's it's two plots away from that one, it would have to go essentially over their plot and over School Wings plot to get to the back. Um, okay. And it, it probably wouldn't be um, easy to 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 
um, put that together. Yeah, okay. Can I yes. come in? Yes, come Tony, in? please. Um, what a lovely job. What a lovely job. A lot of hard work went in there by the looks of things. Um, just to say, if if you do need some more of them at a later stage, um, let me know. And I did say that, Adam. We could probably I'll make some phone calls and we could go down together and get some more if you need to. Also, um, a lovely lady from your village, I can't remember her name was Jen or Jenny or somebody that actually saw um, you on YouTube or the parish council meeting when I offered these pallet bits. Um, she phoned up and said, oh, could you have some? And I said, well, have a look what's down there, which Adam's put in. And if, if you like that, come back to me. But she never did come back. So whether it's the same organization as yours, Adam, I don't know, unless it's somebody in the village that uh, work together with you, I don't know. But if that person's there and wants to contact me and still wants to do it, I'm happy to do that, Chairman. You, Absolutely. And, and similarly, you know, if they're watching this this uh, this live or watching back again, they can obviously also contact us through our website um, using the community allotments as a, as a feed and I'll get that email directly as well. So uh, yeah. If, if that if that offer for help is there then absolutely we'll absolutely take it with both hands but um, yeah thanks tony um okay. what i'll do is i'll get this slot um assembled and then we'll work out how many more we need if any um thanks for your help chairman can i say good night to everybody it's uh, really lovely always a pleasure to come and see all you and uh, if we can help we'll help we got paul there as well and myself so i'm sure we can do things together okay thank you tony and thanks for thanks, the help of you Cheers, Tony. Bye. 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 Okay. So that's my update. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. And yes, uh, got to say you started making a nice job of the allotment, mate. Hey, the soil's you. been broken. <laughs> <laughs> that was the that was the anvil hot you were holding over my head all those all those months now, Kev. And I, you can't do that anymore. <laughs> Well, I just want to see it used, mate. That's all. Yeah, we're not. No, we're it's, not it's, it's it's completely understandable. Yeah, um, not in the chucking money away, as you probably worked out by now. And if there's a good cause at the end of it, then we'll fund some of it. Yeah. But we're not um, going to just fund a dead donkey. No, absolutely. And in the spirit of frugality, like I said, I, we're going to try and keep this a lean lean machine. Uh, but yeah, it's it's the good thing is that we've had interest in the village, which is the main thing, uh, and we good to see it being used this summer. It's the allotment code, allotment owner's code, everything they can beg, borrow, and steal. Okay, we'll move on then to item 14, recreational trust. I haven't got a lot to say after you're missing out that annual message. <laughs> the, um... Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, do we not want to do item 13 first? Village Hall. Village Hall usually comes first. Oh, right. Sorry. I've already crossed that one. I don't know why I've crossed that one. I was happy for a Hades no. um, <coughs> We can always okay. go back to 13. <laughs> yeah. Two, two, um, right. The main one is the um, just the Village Hall is beginning to open up again. Uh, the, um, no, I'm just trying to find the, the right bit of the minutes. Um, the school, um, was due to have returned on the 22nd of April. Uh, the next group that is expecting to return subject to COVID restrictions is uh, the dance group on the 29th of June. Um, at the moment, we're still waiting uh, to see what the hiring conditions are going to be subject to um, understanding what the, the government's uh, direction on COVID is. Um, but the school do wish to in increase their use of also um, through the second half of the summer term. So you know, it's beginning to start moving again. And uh, clearly once we actually get through into June, hopefully we'll, be, we'll see it opening uh, beyond the, um, the limited number of occasions it has for the post office and of course today for voting. Um, so really that's all I think I need to say at the moment. I'll, you know, hopefully by the time we have the next meeting, we'll have a clearer idea possibly, of what government regulations are going to be, perhaps. And uh, when we do, we'll be able to see when the village hall will reopen. I hope so, because we'll be in there. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, but there's us and then there's the rest of the public as well. Okay, so um, 
Okay, Hamish, we've got 14 now then, a recreational trust. Okay, okay, well, the, the report that Lynn, which I'll send to you, covered most of it. Um, the trouble is, we've still had the expenses going on, like the grass cutting and things, and haven't had no income, but the South Somerset District Council grant eased that situation enormously. They're, at the moment, they're contemplating spending quite a bit of money on the maintenance of the play equipment because these things always seem to get old and tired and worn out and things like that. And also the bar area is going to get changed and cleaned up and made better. But what really, um, I nearly said something wrong there, which annoyed me, was that we had no indication from South Somerset District Council, no consultation, and neither did the Parish Council, who are guardian trustees, about Mr Hodder joining his sewage pipe into the Recreation Trust's sewage pipe. Evidently, I forget her name, Rebecca McEwen, is it? Um, at South Somerset, agreed with Mr Hodder that he would pay 33% of the maintenance and any blockages and things like that on the pipe from where he joins it down to the main road. But there was no consultation with either the Recreation Club Committee, Trust Committee, or as far as I can understand from Emma, with the Parish Council, which I think is a bit off, to be honest. I think we were leapfrogs right the way over, Hamish. Well, I don't think you, I don't think the Recreation Trust Committee would agree thirty three percent from judging by their attitude when that other lady wanted to join, and I think it would have been certainly pushing for fifty percent. And if you've got a four bedroomed house, which I think that will be when they finish it. I would say it was going to be putting as much stuff down the pipe as their recreation buildings do because they're only used very intermittently. Well, you all know my view on it, so uh, we were overridden. So here we are. Overridden without <laughs> consultation? Yep. Emma, is there, a, is there a process of raising, raising a grievance on that one at all? Uh, I can investigate that. Um, and obviously it's not my role to prejudge what they're going to say. Um, but I suspect that their response is going to come back somewhere along the lines of, we are the landowners. Mm. What for? Uh, but obviously I'm not going to prejudge what South Somerset are going to say. If you wish me to try and find out if there's a way of yeah, I, raising I a grievance, then that's what I'll do. I wasn't necessarily looking to have the decision reversed. It's more about getting it put on record. The fact that it would have been it would have been fair of them to at least come to consultation with us, even if the even if the point it had the same outcome. It just recognises the uh, the fact that they're not coming in with the uh, the iron hammer and just pushing their pushing their way about. In what in. Because the only thing that the parish council weren't consulted on or weren't involved with at all um, was the maintenance schedule. Because there, there was, albeit not necessarily thorough consultation regarding the connection, there was consultation on that side of it. As far as I can remember, we were asked if we would allow him to connect. All of us said no, we were not happy with it. And the next thing you know, he had permission to connect. We were just shot out of it. As I say, not necessarily thorough consultation. I don't think there was any consultation, was there? They asked if it could happen. We all said no, and it was, they just were not bothered to ask us. What would you like me to, uh, to raise as... Um... It, it was just a proposal back, so. if if it's if it is if it's not worth it um i mean i i don't speak for the whole well, council gone, here, obviously yeah. so just the point being is that obviously hamish um as the representative of the recreational trust was obviously pointing out the fact that the maintenance charge they proposed is probably not 
an accurate representation of the amount of use it's going to be that it's going to have uh, and just pointing out that that um that would have been good to do that but like i said i know the ship sailed um but probably it might be worth just highlighting the fact that uh, it would have been good for them to do that and uh, whether that is up for up for um a revision at some point in the future given you know what whatever happens you know with uh, the use of those uh, those facilities yes. Okay, I will construct something appropriate and send it. I'm, to I'm just proposing it at this stage, Emma. Um, yeah. if, if, the, if the general, if the council feel it's not worth doing it, then absolutely by all means, uh, I would rather you not waste your effort um, if it's not seen that, that uh, it's worth doing that. There's not not much point us being guarded in trustees if we're not consulted about it. I think the concern is whether the, the consultation, you know, yeah, was adequate. And I think you know, Adam's point that yeah, there's a difference between being asked for a view and then being ignored, and a con uh, yeah, and then somebody coming in with a particular costing, and then you know, proper consultation. Um, mm, yeah, I think I think it's disappointed. Is probably the response to go back rather than anything else. I would suggest. I've them. just written the word disappointment. Yeah, I think the point being is if they come back to us and said, "I'm sorry, guys, we are the landowners, and ultimately we're going to make a decision on yes on this." However, how do you feel? What What's the view with regards to the maintenance usage and the and the ratios? I think that would have been at least a, a f at least we would have been consulted and, and advised on those points, um, and obviously the recreational trust as well, but. Um, yeah i emma you are perfectly gifted to take the appropriate action in terms of a response on that one i, I will construct something to ex, to express the disappointment of the parish council provided um, it includes the word disappointment yeah um, Very regarding the, the type <laughs> and um um consideration of the original consultation and the total lack of involvement in the maintenance schedule correct and how, well, and they got to how on earth did they pluck out the figure of the sky from 33%? I only have, I only have that on what Mr. Hodder told me, if I remember it right. The, the Recreation Trust haven't seen any document or any agreement. Yeah, I'm just reading the email that uh, was sent in January. And yeah, not only had they decided to, you know, uh, prove it in principle before they told us. Um, actually, the detail, you know, they didn't mention anything about the maintenance requirements uh, in that at all. It was all about the physical aspects of actually putting it in. Disappointed is the word. <laughs> I'm going to underline disappointed. Great. Twice. Twice, okay. Hang on. Okay, that's done. And we also got item B, climate change. 14, 14 yeah. Why is it B? I don't know. Why have we got no, B? No, no I. I'd say it clock if it was me. Not allowed. <laughs> You're not allowed. You're not giving up. <laughs> okay, climate change emergency agreements. This is the um, climate change emergency grant that we received from Somerset County Council. Uh, I forwarded you the all the agreement that they wish us to sign. Um, obviously, I can't sign that without you saying yes. Go ahead and sign that. Um, a, have you read it? And are you happy for me to sign it on the next bit of information that Tim's about to give you? Right. The what I've uh, discussed with um, Kev and Emma is that we need to flow down those requirements to the uh, the REC trust or some of them. Um, I went through the 17 pages uh, or so that uh, the, um, the requirements from Somerset County Council came up with and the vast majority of them either are not applicable to the um, to this project, 
or are going to be covered by the fact that we're going to be doing the procurement for it so that we can you know, um, avoid VAT charges, et cetera, et cetera. So we will be, the plan at the moment is that we will be running this. I will probably end up, I suspect, project managing uh, the thing um, with due support from uh, the REC Trust. Um, what I, on that basis, I think that A, we need to have an agreement with the REC Trust, and I've sent a, a draft of that to Kevin Demmer. It covers um, approximately five out of the 25 separate um, conditions that were covered by um, SSDC. It covers five that actually are applicable to the REC Trust uh, for it. Um, most of it, most of the rest of the agreement is all about making sure that nobody can possibly get back to South Somerset Council and complain that something that they've done is either you know, illegal or immoral or fattening. Um, sorry, I paraphrase slightly. Um, it's it's a, you know, a detailed requirement uh, agreement. I would propose that um, we accept the agreement with South Somerset uh, Council uh, on the basis that we need to to get the money. Um, and there's nothing in it that is actually um, a major problem, and that we agree a similar but much shorter agreement with the REC Trust. I'll second that, if that was a proposal. Thank you, Hamish. <laughs> yeah, I read for it, um, Tim. Um, seemed okay with me what you did in fact a very good job yeah i was i could, yes absolutely thank you i yes, dreamt of being able to do it that well myself tim so thank you very much yeah trying to chop chop down um overly complex agreements into something slightly simpler is something i've a little bit experienced um i've discussed it uh informally with uh um angie Same. earlier on the um Rec trust uh committee given that we thought we're talking uh, outside of our respective gates. Um, and uh, I'm quite happy if you want me to pass that draft uh, to them, to her and Lynn now, and say this is the uh, basis for us this, uh, going ahead. They know they're going to have to find somebody to actually um, provide the rec trust input to the small management team running the contract. Once I've got um, your ag agreement that's forthcoming, then I'll go back to the contractor, the uh, contractor that gave us the original estimate, and start the negotiations with. Them. Yeah, seems all okay with me. The, I presume the quote is still valid for X amount of time, is it, Tim? Uh, didn't have a um, a drop off date on it, if I remember correctly. In any way, I mean, when I discussed it, they knew that uh, everything was going to be a slow courtesy of COVID. I'm also expecting that uh, the price won't have gone up significantly, but the time scales will have gone stretched out because everybody else would have got in first. Yeah. Okay. I'm happy with it all. Tim, I don't know if everyone else is. Do, do I, you want I to fell, vote on it? I fell asleep trying to read all these pages. <laughs> I don't blame you, Hamish. I, I wish I could. I like to provide reading material to send people to sleep. That's good work. Thanks, Tim. Thank you very much, Tim. Right, next hurdle is getting a thing in. Okay, I'll print off minutes. those 20 odd pages and get it signed. <laughs> right, so you're going to sign the, the agreement, Emma, and we can therefore yeah. hopefully expect to get the money through um it was a 14th or thereabouts wasn't it uh, i'll take your word on that schedule uh yeah schedule to 40 later of the 14th of may or the date that we assign the agreement well i will get the um agreement printed once i've decided that my computer is going to talk to the internet properly um so therefore talk to my printer um and get it printed and signed and sent off Thank you, Emma. Brilliant. Can we okay to move on to 15 now, Emma? Clark's report and correspondence. Okay, by me. There you go, then. Nothing. Uh, one thing. One. Um, 
as Paul alluded to earlier, um, I don't actually think it was actually mentioned fully. Uh, the there was a meeting on the um, um, 30th of April um, of the four district councils involved in Somerset. Uh, and there will be a poll. I've had an email through. If anybody wants further details, then you can do. But it's also on all of the websites, I believe, the district councils. Um, run by Civica Electoral Services, an independently run and verified company. Uh, between the 18th of May and the 4th of June, every elector in Somerset will be issued with a ballot paper and invited to vote by post or online. Uh, and this is to allow them to have their say ahead of the decision made uh, regarding either one Somerset or stronger Somerset or neither. But that's the only correspondence I've, that I have to give. Okay. Is this poll going to be, um, um, what's the word? If it goes one way, is that what's going to happen or is the man up in London still going to decide? The man up in London is still going to decide. Uh, the end of my email says that the district council leaders have written to the Secretary of State to inform him of the poll and its dates and ask that the result of the poll be properly considered as part of the decision making process on the future of local government in Somerset. Any more than that, Hamish, anybody would need a crystal ball to tell you. So we're still back to the South Somerset district council side of the things where they would make that remind what they want to do, whether we vote on it or not. <laughs> You're going to get um, a vote, but not necessarily going to have to go your way. Yes. But a blog you're talking to a government is a Tory. Let's not bring politics into this, Paul. I'm not. I'm just saying the fact. We'll see but what happens. The Secretary of State is the, is the gentleman who will have the final decision. That's correct. And we can't do anything about it. Okay. No so other... Um, correspondence from me thank you um just uh, we did have a an email in to the website with regards to um the hall for hire again and we've had we i think over the last couple of months we have had more more responsive more emails coming into the website with regards to requesting space in the hall as well so it'd be good at, over the next month or to, to at which point we wanted to decide whether you know what the, the the latest statement is on that uh, and whether you're open to, to bookings i know the school's using quite a lot at the moment um just because uh, yeah it could be good to have an idea on, on how we're responding to that for uh, general inquiries from the public right i'll mute myself um the last one that you passed across adam the um i passed it straight across to the bookings clerk and she was uh, in contact the next day with the um, person that was um, interested. So, yeah, but again, you know, Village Hall, until the decision is clear, you know, effectively, we've got three groups using it. We've got the school. Um, um, at the moment, they are pretty much the only major group you know, there. We've then got the legacy groups who we're hoping to bring back. Um, and then there's new groups wishing to come in and... Uh, um, Anne's going to have the usual um, fun trying to you know, shuffle all the various uh, aspirations. Assuming from middle of May, though, the position in terms of at that point, obviously you can have meetings inside, et cetera, depending on what, what yeah. the purpose of the meeting is, that, that will change. But yeah, we, we had a, we had a um, I don't know when the last request was sent across. There was a, an email, I've just spotted it actually come in um, on the middle of April. Um, asking about uh, a meeting, the date's gone past now, um, but uh, it would be good just to, yeah, um, I guess to monitor that one really in terms of, um, or if, um, uh, I'll, I'll dig out the email that um, I sent the last information across to, or unless you want me to send it to yourself, but I but can. I mean, the, the, the website is actually quite clear. It says contact um, the bookings officer and provides Anne's uh, uh, phone number. Yeah, absolutely. Quite often people will just go to the contact the contact button which obviously bypasses all that information so um so that's fine i can i can forward any future inquiries mm. straight to uh, the booking clerk that's no problem I, either to me or if you copy them to copy me in with them as well please but uh, yeah uh, yeah happy i mean the big the big issue at the moment is actually not um how fast can we return to normal to normal it's actually how much we're going to have to do in terms of deep um cleaning uh, deep cleaning between each use and that's that's what's you know likely to mean that we can't take all the bookings we'd like 
Yeah. Um, obviously, Emma, that that's before, unless you beat me to it, of course, and because I know you get those emails straight through you anyway. Um, Tim, have you had any look? At, sorry, Mr. Chair. Sorry, Chairman. I'm I'm just we're probably just deviating a little bit, but I was going to say just on the point you just mentioned, Tim, about uh, has any anything we looked into with regards to fogging at all? Because uh, that is obviously yes. Paul. It, Paul. Well, Paul uh, actually demonstrated. Well, I was present when Paul invited to a demonstration. Paul had of a fogging of fogging equipment. Uh, I then went back and did the calculations. The problem is the volume of the hall um, exceeds the volume of most of the fogging equipment that we could get hold of you know, easily. Plus, the other problem is that certainly the ones like the one that was shown to Paul, although we can have reasonable confidence they would work against COVID, none of the manufacturers will offer any form of um, confirmation. Or, you know, of that because they don't want to be sued. No. What are they? Um, the JLA have come back and confirmed it will kill COVID. Okay, all right, that's, that's a step forward. But yeah, the, the volume, the volume was about 25% bigger than the volume that, the, that um, the largest machine they were offering could actually uh, cope yeah. with. It's just designed for bedrooms mainly, so yeah. yeah. Fine. So, yeah. No, I just thought I'd mention it. Just obviously, if there's anything obviously that can be done to, to ease the, the coming back and obviously getting revenue coming in, then then that's all yeah. good. Right? So surf surfaces are the biggest biggest issue, and unfortunately, you know, actually, actually, it's easier because the village hall doesn't have a lot of surfaces that need cleaning. What it's got is a hell of a lot of volume, and the fogger does volume better than surfaces. We should get one of those robots that goes around the village hall with a UV. <laughs> I think that's what we should do. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Chairman. You program it. <laughs> Okay. Item 16, then. Any other urgent matters raised by permission of the chairman? With my cheeky head on, I think we just did that. Yeah, okay. And um, so item 17, date and time of the next meetings. Village Hall, 7.30, 3rd of June. And then the 1st of July. And then the 1st of July. Let's get June first, shall we? <laughs> I'm being optimistic. Here we are. Is everybody happy with those dates? They are the normal dates, but just speak now if we yep. need to change them. Yeah, just leave it as normal dates at the moment, Emma. Honest for uh, anybody else has a problem with any of them. Just to highlight, uh, I guess, again, for the record, like I mentioned last month, uh, the 1st of July will probably be my last possibly yeah. prob probably be my last meeting I attend before yeah. I go on paternity maybe the one no. in August depending on what happens <laughs> <laughs> oh. no you're not allowed if I'm, at, if, I'm at, if I'm at the, the September meeting then something's definitely very That's late gone wrong. Yeah. <laughs> most most men look for good op good reasons to get away most women deny it Emma the rest of us we seem to have changed the rules around <laughs> anyway Okay, so obviously, as that won't be a streamed event, um, I'm assuming that then for the website purposes, we will remove um, the streaming section from the website and update that accordingly. Yeah, the High Court decision has gone against um, now and South anyway. Um, so this is the last day of virtual council meetings. I'll shed a virtual tear. Um, I think we should all have a, a, a virtual pint at the end of it um, and congratulate each other on having done this for the last year, um, which for some people has been a total and utter culture shock. And I do appreciate that all of you have, have stepped up and done it. So thank you very much. Um, I'm not quite sure what we've done otherwise, but. Perhaps the Recreational Trust could open up the uh, the bar the evening of the first meeting so we can adjourn to there after our, uh, our session. Yes, and, and we'll stand outside. Correctly. It's a group of six or, or, or two households inside, isn't it, still? We can sit outside. That's <laughs> exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll be outside, that's fine. But I, I think they should. Um, if not, I'll bring some cans of stuff down. Um and we can go and sit on the benches like small teenagers um or in the bus shelter um but yes thank you very much everybody for stepping up and doing it uh but yes um 
3rd of June will be in the village hall. It will be face to face. Um, all things going well and not okay. going backwards. And thank you very much, Adam, for doing the streaming. And yeah, we yeah. can probably remove that item, that section from the website. Okay. Thank you all for turning up and thank you all for your help and patience. And uh, thank you for managing to juggle that with everything else you're coping with as well. Yeah. Okay. Have we finished streaming? <laughs>